Okay, so today we're going to do a parallelogram activity. Uh, yeah, it's just that it's just an activity. If you were in class, it would take all period. You'd turn it in at the end for a completion grade, no homework or anything like that. But I want y'all virtual to do the same activity. because we're gonna find some really important properties today. So I'm gonna, I broke it up into the five different videos, one for each page. And I tried to make it a little bit simpler to digest. So without further ado, let's get into it. So since we are doing a parallelogram activity, the first shape is fitting that we look at a parallelogram. So in looking at this parallelogram, you'll notice that we have two sets of parallel sides. That's because that is the basic definition of a parallelogram. So opposite sides are parallel. That's just the basic definition for a parallelogram. But as with anything, there's other properties. And we can find these properties by measuring the sides and the angles. Again, if you were in person, we'd be doing this with a ruler and we would protractor and just having at it, but we're not. I'm doing this via video. So we're just gonna kind of talk through it. If you were to measure, Some of the things you would find are that AB is the same as LR and PL is the same as AR. You would also find that angle P is congruent to angle R and angle A is congruent to angle L. So let's talk about that. We have opposite, opposite sides congruent. Remember opposite means across from. We also have opposite angles congruent. Nope, I need an S in here. There we go. That's two properties we found. Now, the fourth one let, let's say we measured these. Let's say we actually measured them. We would find that. R is 70 degrees. A is 110. L 
is 110, P is 70. We want to measure the angles, that's what we would have found. Now, if you look at any two angles that are beside each other, so P and L, what did P and L add to? 180. What about L and R? Also 180. That's our fourth property here. Consecutive angles. Are supplementary. That's the fourth property here. Now we can go even further. And draw in some diagonals here. So P to R, and then A to L. And one thing that you would find on these diagonals is that, well, let's first just say we actually measured them. Let's first say we measured them. And for this one, we got 3.1 centimeters, 3.1 centimeters up here, 4.4 centimeters, and 4.4 centimeters. Huh, what did those diagonals do to each other? They cut each other in half. What's a fancy way of saying cut in half in geometry? Bisect. So we can conclude that the diagonals bisect each other. So those are our five properties. Now let's say we tried to fold this parallelogram and fold it perfectly in half. Is there any way that we could fold it to where it's folded perfectly in half? No, there's not. So that's because a parallelogram has no lines of symmetry. You cannot fold it perfectly in half, no matter which way you turn it or anything like that. It just won't work. Okay, so now we're going to use 
these properties to find the measures on this parallelogram. Now, notice it gives us measures here. So we don't need a ruler. We don't need like a protractor or anything. We're going to use what's given to us. Okay. So let's try to fill in some things that we know we can fill in from the get-go. For instance, the, from A to E is 4.5. That means from E to C has to be 4.5. From D to E is 7.7. .7. That means E to B has to be 7.7. .7. A to D is 6.4, B to C has to be 6.4. A to B has to be 10.8, so D to C has to be 10.8. So those are signs that we know, might as well just say already. I mean, just from the signs. Then we've got to deal with angles. Well, I mean, this is a parallelogram. So each pair of sides are parallel to each other. So if for a second, let's say I look at this here. Hang on, I'm trying to set up the stage here. Okay. So if I look at this angle right here, it's 36 degrees. Well, how does that angle and angle four relate to each other? Alternate interior. So that means angle four has to also be 36 degrees. Now using that same logic, we can figure out that angle three has to be 89 degrees. And notice I just kind of crisscrossed here. Okay, angle eight, or sorry, yeah, angle eight. What do we have going on here? Ah, vertical angles. That means angle eight is 124 degrees. Now, let's focus on just this triangle right here. Just this triangle right here. What do all triangles have to add to as far as degrees go? 180. Well, I have 36, I have 124. What could I do to get 180? 
I try to figure out what angle will give me 180. Add them up and divide, or add them up and subtract from 180 itself. So let's do that up here. 124 plus 36. Give me 160. Subtract that from 180. I'm going to get 20. That means that angle one has to be 20 degrees. But if angle one's 20 degrees, what other one has to be 20? That's right, angle five. Okay, so let me erase this one. Okay, now for the next set of properties, or for the next set of angles, I should say, Let's see if I can figure out what E is. Well, what do we know about a line right here? What does a line have to equal? One eighty. So how can I get angle E right here? 124 minus 180. It's going to be 56 degrees. So that means over here we're at 56. And at 7, we're at 56 degrees. Okay, well, again, let's focus on this triangle now. Right here. All triangles have to add to equal what? 180. I have two angles, so how can I get the third? Add them up and subtract from 180. So 89 plus 56, give me 15, 145. Subtract the 145 from 180. And you get 35 degrees. So angle two, is 35 degrees. If 2 is 35, what else has to be 35? Angle 6. Okay, well, I think I've done about all the damage I can do. So let's actually look at the blanks to see what all we had to find. We found really everything we could, so let's turn our attention to the blanks. So first they ask us to find BAD. BAD. That's this whole angle. Well, what is that whole angle? It's gonna be 89 plus 
15 carrier one, 125 degrees. Then it asks about the measure of angle A, A, B, C. That's this whole angle right here. Let's see, I got a 20 and a 35. You add those together and you get 55 degrees. And then last but not least, they asked me to find the measure, at least last but not least on this row, find the measure of BCD. So that's going to be BCD, that's this whole angle down here. It's gonna be the same as the first one we found. 125 degrees. Okay, now that's me about the measure of angle one. Well, we already said that's 20, so let's just fill that one in. Angle two, we said was 35 degrees. Angle three, we said was 89 degrees. Four, we said was 36 degrees. Five, we said was 20 degrees. Six was 35. Seven was 56 degrees. And eight was 124 degrees. And now let's look at sides. So they ask us for DC. DC we already said was 10.8. BE. So B, remember our E is right there. BE is 7.7. .7. EC is 4.5. BC, we said was 6.4. BD, so that's the diagonal that goes all the way from B to D. So for that one, we have to add up 7.7 .7 plus 7.7 .7 to give us 15.4. That's what this one is, 15.4 centimeters. And then from A to C, again, we've got to add it up. 4.5 plus 4.5 gives you nine. So nine centimeters. Okay, so that is the parallelogram. We talked about the properties. We worked a problem. So stay tuned for our next shape on this packet.